In this video, I'll show you how I made the actual structure for my book nook. Since I'm really not good with power tools, my dad was kind enough to do all of the cutting of the materials with his table saw. Once the walls and floors were cut, it was then time to cut out the hole for the window. First, a hole had to be drilled so that we could fit the blade of the jigsaw through it. Then it was just a matter of cutting along the lines I had traced around the pre-made window I had bought from the craft store. Now that all the pieces were cut, I had to sand them all down and wipe away the excess dust to make sure that they were ready for paint. to paint the room blue, so I used an acrylic craft paint that I had already had. But after painting the first coat, I wasn't crazy with the color. I felt that it was a little too vibrant. So as you will see with the second coat, I chose a much lighter muted blue that I thought was actually perfect for the room. should note that in between each coat, I had to sand down the wood again because the paint brings out the grain of the wood, which makes it really rough. So before painting a second coat, make sure you always sand your pieces again. Here I'm adding the second coat of paint, and as you can see, it's a much lighter, more gray tone version of a blue. Now it was time to move on to the floor, which I made using popsicle sticks. I glued everything down with wood glue, and then before adding the final pieces, I dry fit the hearth just to make sure that everything was in its perfect place. In order to do an accurate looking wood floor, you have to stagger the wood properly, so it was kind of like a jigsaw puzzle that I was creating for myself as I put the pieces together. Although I tried to fit them to size, I wasn't too worried about pieces hanging over the edge because I knew I was going to sand that all down to a smooth finish at the end. Before attaching the hearth to the base, I knew I was going to have to drill a hole to make sure that the light for the fire could come through. So I first drilled a hole on the base, lined up the hearth, and then cut out the hole in the right place using an X-Acto knife.
One thing I wish I had done a little differently though in this process was I wish I had stained the floors before attaching the hearth permanently to the base. That made it a little harder later to stain the floors without getting stain on the hearth. So if you're doing this process yourself, make note of that before you try this. As I said before, I wasn't worried about the popsicle stick pieces hanging over the edge because I later came back with a Dremel and just sanded down the edges to a smooth finish. And yes, I am doing this over a carpeted floor, but don't worry, the carpet is old and beat up and I wasn't worried about getting it messy. While I think the popsicle floor turned out really well, it didn't go all the way to the edge perfectly on the one side. So I thought I would sand it down and get rid of as much as I could of that little bit of excess that I couldn't really cut off easily with a saw. However, I think this was kind of a mistake because it was really hard to sand something perfectly smooth and straight and I had to deal with that a little bit with attaching the wall later on. Once sanding was done, it was time to stain. While there are definitely different ways that you can stain a floor, like using coffee or watered down paint, I chose to use some actual wood stain that I had. You can usually find this at any hardware store. first started using the stain I found it came out very watery so I actually had to close the tube bag up and squish it around a little bit to mix it up a little bit better and then it started coming out properly. I used an old rag to spread the stain all over the floors quickly and evenly but later I went in with a paintbrush and tried to get in between the little crevices where the natural wood could be seen through the stain. Some areas came out a little darker than others, so I had to go over certain sections a couple of times to make sure that everything looked really even and natural. Again, as you can see here, I'm struggling a little bit to try to keep the stain off of the hearth, and anytime I get it on there, I have to wipe it off right away, otherwise it will mark this hearth itself. When I had the entire floor covered with stain, this was the point at which I broke out a small paintbrush to get into all those little crevices where the rag couldn't reach. I should note this is a paintbrush I don't intend on using for paint anymore. And here are the final original hardwood floors. 
because I wanted to hide the battery for the firelight underneath the book nook, I had to raise it up about an inch. So this is the piece I had to put on the front to hide the gap. Because I wanted to be able to access the switch to turn on the lights for the fireplace from the front of the book nook, I had to cut a hole in that little piece of wood to make sure that I could access it. I started by tracing the shape of the switch and then drilling a hole through the wood with my little hand drill. I was concerned that because this strip of wood was so thin and so narrow, a power drill might be a little bit of an overkill and hard to manage. I tried to widen the hole to the specific size for the switch by using a variety of methods. First, I tried to draw several different holes next to one another to widen the space but that proved difficult because this wood is basswood and not balsa, so it's a little bit harder to get through. Then I tried the chisel blade on my X-Acto knife to try to cut through some of the thickness of the wood so that the switch could actually be reached from the front and wouldn't be so recessed. that didn't work, I tried another carving tool that I had. That worked a little bit better, but it took a lot of filing down to try to finally get it to the perfect size. When I had that all finished, I stained it and it was ready to be added to the front of the book nook. Moving on to the window, this was a pre-made piece that I found at the craft store. All I had to do was sand it and paint it. When that was finished, I wanted to make a winter scene, so I glued some bits of styrofoam to the outside of the window and covered it with black fabric. I wanted to add beadboard to the lower half of the walls, so I dry fit the window to make sure I knew how high I needed to cut the beadboard, and then simply cut these wood stir strips into the right size. Painting them white, I then started to glue them to the walls. At this point, I had already glued the fireplace into its spot so that I knew exactly where to fit the beadboard. In order to keep the window level, I added some more wood around the frame so that it would have something to rest on and stay even with the beadboard. Then, to cover up the rough edges, I added some dollhouse molding to the top and the bottom of the beadboard. To create the piece that went over the hearth, I split it in two smaller sections and then sealed the seam with the white paste that I had used to cover the hearth.
When it was finally time to put on the last wall, there was a big gap in the corner. So I used some dry deck spackling to seal the hole, and then when it dried, I could paint over it. And finally, for the molding on the ceiling, I used a jewelry medallion that I found at the craft store, cut out the middle, and spray painted it white. Then I glued it to the ceiling and used a magnet to attach the light fixture. And this is how it looks all put together.